I am Malala, Chapter 10, 2008, What Terrorism Feels Like. Somehow daily life continued despite the bomb blast and killings. School remained a haven from the insanity of the city in the middle of a war. It wasn't always possible to attend between the bomb blast and the curfew, which could be enforced any time of day. And sometimes noisy helicopters flying overhead made it so we couldn't hear a thing. And on those days, we would be sent home. But if the school opened its doors, I was there ready to spend time with my friends and learn from my teachers, from the teachers. My friends and I had now moved to the upper school, and our friendly competition got even more competitive. We didn't just want to get good grades, we wanted to get top grades. It wasn't just that we wanted to be the best, although we each enjoyed it when we were. It was because when our teachers like Miss Oliphat in primary school said excellent or well done, our hearts would fly. Because when a teacher appreciates you, you think, I am something. In a society where people believe girls are weak and not capable of anything except cooking and cleaning, you think, I have a talent. When a teacher tells you that all great leaders and scientists were once children too, you think, maybe we can be the great ones tomorrow. In a country where so many people consider it a waste of time to send girls to school, it is a teacher who helps you believe in your dreams. And I found a great <clears throat> new teacher in our upper school headmistress, Madam Merriam. She was bright and independent, everything I wanted to be. She had been to college. She had a job earning her own wage. Now that we were in upper school, the subjects became more difficult. We took algebra, chemistry, and my favorite, physics. And even though our teachers had only a back blackboard and chalk, we were free to go as far as our curiosity would take us. When we were learning about chemistry, one girl stopped the class to ask a question. If everything is made up of atoms, what are atoms made of? Another asked, if electrons are constantly moving, why isn't this chair I'm sitting on moving? The teacher put aside the day's lessons, and we all asked questions to our heart's content. But mostly we talked about those days but mostly what we talked about those days was the army and the Taliban. All of the people in SWAT were caught in the middle. One friend used to like to annoy me by saying, <clears throat> Taliban is good, army not good. And I would always reply, when you are caught between military and militants, there is no good. The trips from school had become tense and frightening and I just wanted to relax once I was safe inside my home. One day, I arrived ahead of my brothers, thrilled I didn't have to fight with Kushal for the remote for once, and settled into my new favorite TV show, Shararat, which means making mischief. It was just a Bollywood comedy, but I loved it. I turned on the TV, and all I got was static. I switched stations. More static. I tried every station. Nothing but static. At first, I thought it was another annoying power adage. We had been having them every day. But that night, we found out that Faz Lula's men had switched off the cable channels. They said that TV was haram. It showed the westernized world, where women had love affairs and do not cover their hair. With nothing left to watch but the official government television channel, we were all cut off from the outside world. Faz Lula meanwhile, kept broadcasting his sermons. Girls should stay at home, he preached. We did our best to ignore him until one day I came home to find my father with his head in his hands. Oh, Yanni, he said, the world has gone mad. Fazlula and his men have blown up the girls' school in Mata. My heart dropped. The school Fazlula had destroyed was a primary school, not even a school that taught teenagers. He had bombed the school at night when it was empty. But how cruel this man was, hurling fire bombs at a place where little children wanted to learn to read and write? And add, why, I wondered, why was the school building such a threat? to the Taliban. I whispered a quick prayer for the children who'd lost their school and another to protect the Kashal school. Please God, I prayed, help us to protect our valley and to stop this violence. Every day, Faz Lula's men struck a new target. Stores, roads, bridges, and schools. Most of the attacks were outside Mingora, but soon they got closer 
and closer. One day I was in the kitchen cleaning dishes, despite my best efforts to avoid them, and a bomb went off so close that the whole house rattled and the fan over the window fell. Before I could even react, the power went out. I learned that this was how it happened. Bombs, then darkness. The Taliban bombed us, and then the power went out for an hour at least. A few days later, Taliban struck again. A funeral for one of the victims of their last attack was being held in a nearby building. As the mourners gathered to pay their respects, a suicide bomber blasted himself. More than 50 people were killed, including members of Moniba's family. I had grown up hearing the word terrorism. But I never really understood what it meant until now. Terrorism is different from war, where soldiers face one another in battle. Terrorism is fear all around you. It is going to sleep at night and not knowing what horrors the next day will bring. It is huddling with your family in the centermost room in your home because you've all decided it's the safest place to be. It is walking down your street and not knowing whom you can trust. Terrorism is the fear that when your father walks out of the door in the morning, he won't come back at night. Now the enemy was everywhere, and the attacks came out of nowhere. One day, a store was destroyed. The next day, a house. Rumors flew. The store owner had crossed Fazlula and had helped the army. The man whose house was targeted was a political activist. A bridge was blown up one day. A school the next. No place was safe. No one was safe. Our family tried to carry on as normal, but we were tense all the time. Bombings became such a regular part of our daily lives that we fell into a routine every time we heard a blast. We called to one another to make sure everyone was safe. Kaista, Pishu, Bahabi, Kushal, Atal. We cried, then we listened for the sirens, and then we prayed. This kind of random terror made us do strange things. My father started taking a different route home each evening in case someone was studying his routine. My mother avoided the market and my brother stayed inside even on the sunniest days. And since I had been in the kitchen both times there were blasts in our house, I stayed as far away from that room as possible. But how can a person live when she is afraid of a room in her own home? How can a mother buy food for her family if the market is a war zone? How can children gather for a game of cricket if a bomb could go off under their feet? Nighttime was the worst. When darkness fell, we all, we all startled at every creek and jump at every shadow. Nighttime was when Fazlula's men carried out most of their attacks, especially the destruction of schools. So every morning, before I rounded the corner on the way to the Kashal school, I closed my eyes and said a prayer, afraid to open them in case the school had been reduced to rubble overnight. This was what terrorism felt like. In 2008 alone, the Taliban bombed 200 schools. Suicide bombings and targeted killings were regular occurrences. Music shops closed. Daughters and sisters were prevented from going to school. And during the month of Ramadan, we had no power or gas in Mingora because Fazlula's men had blasted the electricity grid and the gas line. One night, when a blast hit, especially close to our home, I went to my father's side. Are you scared now? I asked. At night, our fear is strong, Yanni, he said. But in the morning, in the light, we find our courage again.